When discussing the Javits siblings and Sarah, there's another vital person we must discuss. Sid Javits. He's the founder of Javits Enterprise and the father, father of Rudo and Rune. The Javits family was never, never an affluent one. Born the eldest son of the family ever since he was a child, he was different from his peers. I'd been with him since I was young, and we were practically brothers. Of all the people who I'd grown up with in the slums, he was the only one who I'd remained friends with till the very end. Sid's father was reprehensible. A worthless man, an alcoholic who had become violent with his own family. Family, truly savage. He wouldn't lift a finger to do any honest work, instead using his shady connections for get-rich-quick schemes to smuggle large amounts of purified mana into the outer pole. When Sid was nine, that man said that he would leave to find work elsewhere and promptly disappeared from Cadia. Sid had to take care of his weak mother all by himself. At the time, the idea of using mana for energy hadn't existed in Cadia. Instead, we had to use coal or kerosene to make it through winter. The winter cold was so harsh that there were numerous casualties every year. It was where we lived, the slums, that was always hit the hardest. If only we had some kerosene. Until he lost his mother, Sid had often repeated the phrase. He and I did our damnedest, working with everything we had to keep his mother in good health. But of course, we were still only, only nine years of age. Whatever we made never amounted to much. After two years of painful struggle, Sid's mother passed away when we were eleven years old. That year, something inside of Ch Sid changed. He had always been prejudiced against the world, cursing at every chance he got, but that changed completely. Perhaps he came to an epiphany. Unless he changes, the world will swallow him up whole. That if he goes on like this, his life will have amounted to nothing but him crawling in the dirt. He accepted the unjustness and brutality of the world. With his mother's passing, Sid was alone and free to do what he wanted. Wherever he had, whenever he had time, he would talk about mana. At the time, it was all so completely beyond me. Sid's father, whom he so hated, was obsessed with mana. Although he had hated it, he continued, he continued to pursue it, which wasn't something one would expect. Unlike his father, however, he wasn't interested in short-term, get-rich-quick schemes. While we continued working in the coal mines, he would pill for sediment that had trace amounts of colored mana in them, bringing them back as research material. Howie! Ooh, the foreman's in a pretty bad mood today, too. I knew this was going to be some hard work, but I tell you, being a coal mine worker ain't something a human ought to do. It barely pays enough just to put food on the table, too. Yeah, my joints are all just screaming in pain! Still, we ought to consider ourselves lucky to even have work. Looks like this year's winter is going to be incredibly cold as well. At least it's freaking hot while we're working. <laughs> I'd rather be moving around and working than just sitting in around in school all day. It's way more fulfilling. So yeah, they're basically like the entrepreneur duo. Who the heck would want to waste their childhood in a dump like that? Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> you have a point there. Oh, right, Albus, let me show you something really cool. Hmm? What? This is that. That's fried it's sediment. There's not a lot of it, but there's definitely a little bit of colored mana inside. Now, where did you even... Well, we were mining. That coal mine might actually be a mana mine. What have you done, Sid? Don't tell me you're going to sell that. No way, that's dirty money. They'll find you and throw you in prison. Oh, don't be stupid. Like, I could sell such a valuable sample. Sample? Actually, this isn't the first sample I found. The first one I found was even smaller than a pea. But the deeper I dug, the sediment just kept getting bigger and bigger. You've been sneaking out sediment for that long. Look, just listen to what I have to say first, okay? I made a pretty interesting discovery. Come by my laboratory later. Laboratory? You mean your house, right? Oh, come on, the name's pretty important, okay? If I said my place, it wouldn't get you fired up! I'm struggling to understand your logic here. 
Look, just pay me a visit, all right? Besides, we could just head straight there, couldn't we? Oh, well... I suppose we could, but... It's the show of the thing, you know? Hmm? Today's the day when my mom, you know... Oh. I thought I'd leave her a flower or two. I see, it's already been that long, huh? Anyways, just meet me at my laboratory. See you there. Bye. Fast forward to a few years later. We began to immerse ourselves in colored mana purification research. We conducted all sorts of absurd experiments. Sid loved high-risk experiments, a trait, me ha a trait he may have inherited from his father. On one occasion, he suffered mana shock and ended up being able to un to unable to move his left arm. As I continued to support Sid, we both spent our adolescent years in mana research. Every day. Every single day of it. We toiled as if possessed by the god of mana himself. After countless failures, we finally succeeded. But finally, we were able to purify colored mana. This isn't self-praise or, praise or ex exaggeration. It was truly was the discovery of the century. The news quickly spread throughout the entire Outer Pole. Then on one day, we began to look for investors who were willing to commercialize the mana system. Why? Just what all, was all that hard work for, then? What exactly are we going to do if we don't look for investors? Conversa the conversion efficiency with just this filter isn't good enough. If the sediment has low mana concentration, then that means that it isn't going to be enough energy. Just how much time do you think it takes to convert enough energy to match a candle that lasts burning for two, three hours? At this point, mining coals is still more efficient. Well, of course, our research is still just in its initial stages, so if we continue our line of research, then... By the way, have you heard elec of electricity before? Electricity? Or are you talking about that one person in the third sector who's trying to control the energy from lightning? That's right. But from what I hear, that technology's still in its infancy. Not only that, it's quite dangerous. According to the opinion of the Board of Science, it probably won't see any widespread use anytime soon. Ha <laughs> ha! The opinion of those idiots over the board ain't worth their salt. The mana didn't actually exist, and I sure as heck to be looking into electricity too. Besides, if we're talking danger here, mana's just as guilty. Heck, it might be that mana's way more dangerous than electricity. What would make you say that? My left arm's been acting up again lately. Does it still hurt? Nah, not exactly. Feels like it's... I don't know. It's weird, like it's slowly being eaten away by something. What in the... Has it been that way since you were able to move it? No, just recently. I didn't say anything at first because it didn't really get in the way of work, but it's been hard to ignore lately. I wonder what's causing it. No clue, but one thing's for sure. There's still a whole lot of mana. A whole lot of unknowns we've yet to discover about mana. As a result of further research, we succeeded in generating a stable, usable amount of mana. In the meantime, we managed to meet willing investors who were interested in our work despite our youth. We sure got lucky, I commented, but Sid said, No, we made this happen in response. He was the type who hated any fatalistic mindsets. A few years later, everything was going smoothly. Thanks to the investors, Shevitz Enterprise was established without a hitch. At the same time of the founding, Sid married the girl from a neighboring town who had entered the company. Her name was Aline Crossrow. She had unnaturally beautiful emerald eyes and pearly white skin. Outspoken and imbued with a strong sense of justice. However, she had been born with a weak constitution, much like Sid's mother. Her, Aline's, wish was to benefit other people and the world. She was the type of person who could change the atmosphere just by being there. No matter how rebellious or contrarian someone is, they would immediately become docile and obedient when faced with her. One couldn't help but think of her as a good person, regardless of logic or reason. She was a simple, truly lovable human being. There wasn't anyone who wouldn't be, a, who wouldn't be inspired by her zeal. As Jevitz grew in power, so did its profits and efficiency, as it continued to devote itself to the greater good. 
It didn't reach its peak efficiency, but when winter came, it managed to cut casualties down to less than half. The company continued to gain influence. As we continued to grow in fame and fortune, Rudo was born. Rudo, he was truly a brilliant child. Having inherited both Aline's kindness and his father's wisdom, Rudo was truly a good person. We lived our days in happiness. At the time, we hadn't realized. Somewhere unbeknownst to us, we had created a great and powerful enemy. Hey, Sir Aline, have you heard about Hyves? This is the company of that idiot who tried to control lightning, right? Of course I have. I have two, and none of it is any good. The filter they're using, that's the one that Sid designed. Shouldn't we do something about them? Who cares? Honestly, I don't even know what they're trying to do with these old rel those old relics of filters. But that clearly means he's painting a target on your back. He must be bitter that you've ruined his plans for electricity. Rip. <laughs> the bastard can do whatever the hell he wants to. He failed to make electricity succeed. He's got a grudge against us, and now he's sticking his neck into the mana industry. To top it all off, he uses the product that his rival designed to start his own company. He sure has guts, so I'll give him that. I promise you, we are equals from here on. Ah, don't be stupid, I wouldn't do anything like that. He's got no vision. So is this like the Microsoft of the mana electricity world? The mana power world, rather, because electricity they don't like, because they think it's dumb. Touche. But you have a point. What does he hope to accomplish by using those filters? That's a losing strategy when he's going up against us. Well, who knows? We're up against someone who's trying to use his enemy's ideas against him and live. You'd be surprised how tough enough job like that is to take down. What's wrong, Aline? You're looking pretty pale. As normal, honestly. I have... I have... Ooh. A bad feeling about all this. Well, come. It's just... Everything has been going so smoothly for all of us. Something's got to happen sooner or later. Hey now, you're talking about karma. We ain't done a single awful thing to anyone. Why do you think we need to pay back for all the happiness we've been experiencing so far? I... I suppose so. And then they had Rune. A few years later, Rune was born. With almost inexplicable timing, Hive has experienced an explosion of growth. Despite being of no competition, competition in terms of both experience with mana and the underlying technologies, they managed to one-up us in terms of business acumen. Their expansion was un absolutely unprecedented. No one was able to anticipate that Hyves could gain enough power to compete with Shevitz in just a few short years. Man is likely to become a highly dangerous substance to us residents of the Outer Pole, just as it had been to Sid when his left arm was affected. Make one mistake and you could use your life. Lose your life. Sid knew that well. Because enough investors from the co for the company were secured, Zid was able to prioritize development of medical treatments when Javits Enterprise was first established. Aline spearheaded the charge, having Javits assemble every skilled doctor around and founded Javits Medica. People had to undergo proper training to handle mana as part of their work in Javits. Javits dedicated its resources to educating and training its employees. However, it takes time to develop competent mana miners and sediment handlers. Regardless, developing skilled, educated personnel and providing a safe work environment were the top priority. On the other hand, Hyvez's strategy was to completely ignore all such safety protocols and exploit the poor economic situation. Hyvez's strategy, strategy, process one. It's a drug extracted from mana, creating humans who could continue to work without sleep or rest, and who could produce antibodies that could combat, combat mana. Furthermore, the subjects of the drug were promised lifetime employment. Immunity to low-level mana shock and superhuman strength. Ives poured its efforts into marking, it, marking it itself as an entity that could grant these kinds of abilities, serving to excite its subjects all the more. The masses ate up Ives' hyperbole-filled slogans. It was a devious strategy that, strategy that resonated with everyone at a time when employment was at an all-time low. And it's awful because it's a poison. Hey, that was just too much. Yeah. After effects on subject, I can't believe they're that horrible. 
completely losing it because of insomnia. Turning into nothing but skin and bones. Bodies rotting away due to partial mana shock. That abbey was filled with victims of Hyvez's operations. Some patients even had to be carried off to a church in the neighboring town. I know. And Sid, we have another problem. I brought Aline and the Medica's chief over to the Friars to propose the construction of a general hospital under Jevitz, but... They gave you the stink eye? Yes, or rather we were assailed with some rather unbecoming speech. It was because of us, it was because of people like us that the God of Mana was angered, causing these victims in the first place. That this was divine retribution for being blinded by our greed and desire for convenience. Damn. I can't tell exactly whether or not the priest was right. But this isn't the time for that. I believe we need to pursue the Medica project even more now. Why doesn't the government just outlaw the human testing of Process 1? That would solve the problem altogether. I'm sure that if the Board of Science would just do something, then the government would... The government, the Board of Science, and Hivez are all in cahoots. Secretly exporting Process 1. What? Why would they do that? Money? First possible use for that for it that comes to mind is the same thing that Hivez does for their workers. Drugs to dope up crafters. Performance enhancement for armies, or maybe they found other ways they found ways to weaponize this stuff. Well, it's a, still a pretty new substance. Depending on where the research goes, they could find all sorts of uses for it. No. Well, not that I have any proof or anything, it's all just a guess. Albus, the worse your predi predictions get, the more likely they are to be true. Anyway, putting that aside, let's get back on track. Like Albus said, I don't plan to give up on getting that hospital set up. But Sid, a vast majority of those patients would rather seek salvation from the church than medical attention from a hospital. I'm sure they'd try to get into an overcrowded abbey than a newly built hospital. And if that isn't possible, they'd just resign themselves to death. D did people hate us that much? It can't be. We didn't do anything for people to hate us that much, right? I suppose to the average layman, there isn't much difference between Hives and us. In any case, I don't see any really real point in constructing a hospital with the way things are going now. Damn, what do we do then? Well, Sid, I have a plan. What you said about the government and Hives earlier got me thinking. Why don't we just make the church allies with Shevitz? What? What? Huh? Financial backing is a given. We renovate their facilities, get them new equipment. Maybe even build a new abbey altogether. Then we name the hospital after the church, put it under their management. But in exchange, the actual hospital's operation will remain under Shevitz Medica. What about that? Whoa. As they say, Rex Regna den Nun Gu better not. They will reign but not govern. So Latin exists here. Wait, wait, just a minute here. This entire thing's gotten so huge, I don't even know where to begin. Besides, they clearly hate us. What makes you think they'd even want to work with us? I have a good idea. An idea? I heard that quite a number of sisters passed away the other day due to a contagious form of mana shock. There were some who put their life on the line trying to subdue the patients. Gr uh, trying to subdue the patients grew violent and unstable. With love as their only weapon, they tried to quell some men who were many times stronger than they were, muscles swollen from the doping, of doping effects. Anyway, they did absolutely everything in their power to provide their utmost care for the patients. Sid, we should dedicate our next, pro next project on absolute auto obedience automa automata to the sisters. And rather than models specifically made for the mana mines, we should focus on creating humanoid models to help support the sisters. That way they can protect the sisters from any contagious forms of mana shock or any patients who get too violent. Helene? That's quite an ambitious plan. The sisters project. But it might actually work out. I'll pass the proposal on to mechanical, mechanical engineering partners about this. There's sort of poetic justice to all this. 
for people who lo like us who make a living off of science, probably the least theistic thing there is to be saved by religion. Like we have to pay attention to the little details like that. We have to focus on caring for the patients and minimizing the victims. Amen. A few days later, we headed to the church. Father, we are indebted for... Whoa. Father, we are indebted for being allowed an audience today. But of course, anything for the famous president of Shevitz Enterprise, whom this church so despises. Now, what is it? Mr. Sid Shevitz, what is it that you and your organization need of us? My wife told me about your circumstances here the other day. I've heard that many of the sisters here had become victims of the subjects they were trying to save. This is the unfortunate truth. This state of affairs was brought about by the competition between you and Hives. By playing with mana, you treat the blessings of God like mere toys. Do you understand that that is blasphemy? Do you have anything to say as a fool who chose to ignore their faith and blindly pursued science until its bitter end? I have no words to offer in my defense, but we as Jevitz have no intention of just giving up. Even if Shevitz Enterprise were to abandon this mana race and let Hyves win, that wouldn't that won't put a stop to the victims. I can confidently say that we are on the side of good here. We conduct our business with the highest moral and, eth and ethical standards. To me, the nature of your business and Hyves is one and the same. I'm well aware of that. However, I want you to understand that we will not back down against Hyves. We have our own beliefs to adhere to. Why do you continue to rebel against God like this? It is God's will that we must simply accept so he can carry out his divine plan. Is it that difficult to simply accept what has been given to you and live a life within your means? Science is nothing but the height of folly. It is proof that you are ungrateful of the blessings and the life that you have received. Sure, that might be the case for you. But let me tell you about- let me tell you this, father. As long as we ha humans have this thing called curiosity, the march of science will never stop. We just had to find out about the hidden possibilities of mana. Oh, it's not just about mana. You tell a human being to live in this world without trying to satisfy their curiosity? That's just plain impossible. But curiosity is another one of those gifts that your god gave us humans, isn't it? Blasphemy. Did you want to meet with me face to face simply to lecture me on God and human nature? No, we came here because we'd like to pitch something. Pitch? What could this be now? We're currently developing machines to assist, to assist with work in the mines. They'll be powered by mana and be able to understand what we have to do and, car and can carry out those commands. What in the... However, we've decided to stop work on that. Instead, we've decided to devote our time to creating machines to provide so support to the Sisters of the Church. Why exactly would you do that? Father, do you want to work with us at Jevitz? I beg your pardon? Right now, even if we built a general hospital in town, there would be far more people who would seek help from the Church. But Father, that just isn't going to work out. Sorry to say, but what you're doing isn't going to save a single life. The only way to save people who are dying for mana is with mana itself. We have completely different values, but I'm sure that we share the same fundamental desire to save as many people as we possibly can. Please, let us work with you. I'm sure patients wouldn't have any problems if you, t if you have them go to a hospital that has your blessing. I see. And there, we're going to have our machines take the place of the sisters instead. We've already partnered with an engineering company to make sure that they look perfectly human. They'll have, to have just have they'll just have as much humanity as we do. If you let the machines deal with any dangerous patients, then I'm sure you can prevent any sisters from losing their lives. This sisters project is our way of showing our sincerity in this proposition. Please, won't you consider? I see how it is. Truly a suggestion that could only have been put forth by someone so entrapped in worldly desires such as yourself. 
A suggestion that completely and utterly ignores the demands of our church. Well, I... Oh, that's enough. This is no longer something that we can discuss. However, you wish to save as many as you can, correct? Your sentiment reeks of arrogance and a lack of concern for the souls of the deceased. But very well. I can understand your reasoning. We're very grateful for... However, we cannot accept those machines of yours. W why not? Don't you want to prevent any more of the Abbey sisters from becoming victims? Of course I want to put a stop to the victims, and I wish to save as many people as we can. However, these patients have all come here seeking salvation from God. Although I suppose you atheist heathens won't understand. No matter how well they can mimic human behavior, like how a hymn sung without a heart won't heal. Prayer from something without a soul will not save anyone. The Sid? Just silenced by a member of the clergy. Still, for such non-believers to save lives in the name of the church, your convictions have come through. I will need some time. Well, I guess we're done. Hmm? Oh my. The mind sink was cut? Ah, the connection just... Oh no. Sorry, I'll get it patched up now. What's fucked, milady? More importantly, how is your condition? Well... It's a mana. Well? Oh, I mean, how do you feel? Yeah. No, what I mean is, uh... God, this is just such a pain! This is the first time I've had so much difficulty connecting a dive right. Is that the case? Is this case mu that much different from than usual? There has to be just the right amount of mana of pressure from external mana, so that the internal mana can stabilize. Being able to refine mana consistently is quite a difficult feat. And because you're from the outer, outer pole, you're fucked. Even though we look to be the same people, it's amazing how differently our bodies can function. It's like we're completely different species. I beg to disagree. Hmm? It all boils down to the presence or absence of mana. If we were able to stay here too long, then our mana systems would end up deteriorating and we would end up with the same physically as you. Physicality as you, my bad. Albus, you and we are all just the same human beings. I see. If I may, about that memory just now, you referred to a church. Does that mean there are also mana-related religions in the Outer Pole? There certainly are. In fact, the reason why a company like ours was able to grow so, so, grow so much despite being anything but religious is because of Aline's idea that we partner with the church. Even in the Outer Pole, there are plenty of people who seek help from the God of Mana. I never knew. The owner of a pawn shop said that the God of Mana had forsaken this land, which is what led to the develop of, development of science. That's pretty accurate. Even though our principles and religion contradict each other, they can still coexist with each other. When it all boils down to it, us humans need something to believe in. Even if it is a, even if it is a god who's abandoned us. I had thought this land was... This was a land with nothing but self-serving individuals, but that wasn't the case. Sid and Aline have such a strong sense of duty and concern. Those two are truly amazing. There's so much I could learn from such wonderful people. Agreed. While I was so fixated on working on simply conducting research, those two were always wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly directing their efforts into making the Outer Pole a better place. I was often reminded of the differences in our personalities when they were still around. What do you mean? I had heard that Sid had already moved on to the next world, but has his wife Aline also passed on as well? Yes, several weeks after Rune died, she had also passed away. You see, Aline was killed by Rune. She laced the tea Aline had always drank with Process 1 before it was refined into a drug. Ah! Ah! She was killed by her own flesh-and-blood daughter. I, I can't believe it. 
Rune, who often frequented, frequented Shevitz's labs, had actually snuck in and stole Process 1 that was kept for research purposes. She had taken enough to kill 10 adults. Directors and executives of other companies, of companies from other Outer Pole regions who were all supposed to merge with Shevitz, had later been found dead, poisoned. Rune then committed suicide after. Thanks to that one incident, our dream, Sid's, Aline's, and mine, to expand Shevitz throughout the Outer Pole was completely scrapped. That sucks. Was that a sincere loss for words? Just what could possibly drive Rune to do all that? Because the real Rune was a shit. Just ten years of age, she... We had heard that she was a problem child of sorts. No, this is far beyond that. The Devil's Spawn... She certainly does live up to that nickname. What was her motive? There must have been something that pushed her to do that, right? We couldn't find anything like that. Rune had an abnormality in the brain, you see. A portion of her brain wasn't working, even if she was able to understand emotions like happiness, sadness, and anger. She couldn't feel them herself. She didn't feel fear or guilt, nor was she able to develop a sense of compassion. <clears throat> But could someone have developed such destructive tendencies simply because of a lack of emotion? I don't know. Maybe Rune was special. But at this point, there's no way for us to find out. Um, sorry to interrupt. But I finished the connection. Are you alright, Sylphine? You're looking a little pale there. Yes. I think she's low on mana. Do we continue from earlier? Yes. All right, you're on it. It'll be about the Jevet siblings. Now I have to warn you, it's going to be rather disturbing. Are you sure you want to keep going? We are. Oh boy, 